Hey there, David from Figma here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool in Figma design. Whether you're making icons for an app or drawing a fun illustration for a class project, the pen tool helps you create more detailed and custom designs. There's a community file linked in the description of this video with activities that we're actually going to go through together. Feel free to pause at any time and complete them at your own pace. Let's jump to page one with a quick warm up, where we'll see how to edit vector paths that were actually made by the pen tool. Let's go. As you can see, I have three vector paths. They're all in this frame titled warm up. When I hover over the vector paths, I can see in the layers panel that they're also highlighted over here. What we're gonna do is quickly play around with these vector paths to understand vector networks a little more clearly. I'm gonna zoom in so I can see this a little bit better and encourage you to do the same. Select the shape and hit enter or return to be in vector edit mode. Then hover over one vector point and slightly move it. When in vector edit mode, you can see that when I'm on the midpoint of a line, I'm also given a prompt to edit that vector path by selecting a new vector point. This right here is a vector path. These points are called vector points. And this whole thing is a network. If I select multiple points and move them around, they correspond to each other. If I hold down shift and select two opposing points and move them, those will move in relationship to one another while they're selected. To get out of the vector edit mode, hit enter, then hit escape to be off the shape. Let's move to the next one. Here I'm gonna select the shape and hit enter to be in vector edit mode. I'm gonna go down over here and I should see a new tool called the bend tool. Select the top vector point and you've just bent it. You can further manipulate the bend by selecting and clicking on the vector handles, pulling away to expand, bringing in to contract. I can also hold down the option or the alt key to move the handles independent from each other. I can move this one here, hold down the alt key and move this one here. Hit enter, then escape to stop editing that vector shape. Let's move to this last one. Select the shape and hit enter to be in vector edit mode. Select the paint bucket and click into the shape itself. I can change the fill of this shape by adding the paint bucket fill within a closed vector path. I can further go into my advanced stroke settings and I can change the joints to be rounded. I can also change how I want this vector path line to show if it's dashed or custom. Let's keep it solid for this one. Click the X, hit enter and escape to get off of that shape. Now that we're warmed up a little bit with our vector paths and maybe how those vector points within the vector path behave, let's go to our first page where we will actually make our own vector networks on number two pen tool basics. Here you will see four designs we're going to draw with the pen tool. The example of each design is seen above and you can actually click on it to see how that vector path behaves if you wish to do so. I'm gonna zoom out, hit escape to be off that vector path, escape again and move over to shape one. As you zoom into these, you'll see that there are these little dots. Now I encourage you to try to get really close so that you're pixel perfect on these shapes. To create your first vector path, you're going to go down to the toolbar and select the pen tool. You can also use the keyboard shortcut P. Hover your cursor over this first dot and simply click. Don't hold and drag, but just simply click. When you move your mouse or your finger off the trackpad, you will see that that first vector point is made and a second vector point is coming off of the initial one. I'm gonna zoom out while having this selected and move over to my second place that I want to add the vector point. I'm going to click. You can see that I have a weight of four on my line. If you don't, you can go down here. Let's say if you have one, you can go down here, type in four and hit enter. There we go. I also have the vector position of the line to center instead of the inside or outside. Let's keep all these center for now. Next, I'm gonna scroll down and snap that right here. I'm gonna scroll over to the left, snap that right here, zoom out. And this one actually, let's get pretty close. And you'll see that I need to actually snap this to the first vector point in order to close that shape. I'm gonna hit Control Z just to show you something. If I don't, the shape is not actually going to be closed. Some things that will affect are if you try to fill a shape that isn't closed, well, you can't fill it. I'm gonna hit Escape and let's actually, I'm gonna hit Control Z and select my pen tool to go back and close that shape. Just something to know. When you zoom out, you should have a shape that looks like this. Hit Enter to stop being in vector edit mode and escape to unselect that shape. Should be looking pretty good, just like this. Let's move to the next one. For this one, you're going to start in the top left-hand corner. 
make sure that this vector path is still not open in vector edit mode. If it is, and you go to try to make a new shape, it's going to try to create another shape within that original vector path, which we do not want. Again, to get off of a vector path, hit enter and escape. There we go. Click the pen tool, zoom in here and start in the top left. I'm gonna scroll over here and snap it here. You're gonna see that I already have the weight to four because of my previous shape I made was that line weight. Let's go over here, snap it like so, hover over to the right hand side and make a click. Come back to the top left, you need to make sure that you snap that next vector point on the initial vector point you made. There we go. Let's zoom out and with this still in vector edit mode, let's click on the paint bucket. Click up here and change this fill to be a red. Click down here and change this to be a blue. There we go. Let's hit the X on here, hit enter and escape. Let's move over to the next one. This one's gonna look a little wonky at first. Click on the pen tool and come up here to the top right. Just click the vector point like so and then follow this dot. And actually, we're not gonna bend the vector path quite yet. We will once we complete the shape. Click here and follow the clicks on the right-hand side. You can also hold down Shift to snap your lines a little bit more accurately. There we go. I'm gonna keep holding down Shift. You can see that I can actually snap my lines in 45 degree increments. This last one, make sure that you do close the vector path so that it creates a vector shape. Zoom out, and from here, we're going to select the Bend tool. The bend tool should appear right above your pen tool. Select the bend tool and click on these interior vector points. Then click on the ones on the left hand side. You should see that I have the curve of the shape that I want. However, these endpoints aren't looking like I want them to. While still in vector edit mode, select the selection tool and hover over the top two shapes. In advanced stroke settings, you can change the joint to be round. Hover down to the bottom, select over here these bottom two by left clicking and dragging or holding down shift and selecting both by clicking and change that joint to be rounded again. There we go, that's looking just how I want it. Hit enter to be out of vector edit mode and escape to be off that shape. Last one here, go down to the pen tool. Let's start in the top right. Click the first vector point in the top right hand corner. Come down here again if you wanna zoom in and be pixel perfect in the very center, you can do so. I'm gonna come down here and click on the bottom right. Now again, these are gonna look a little wonky. Let's do the left side. You'll also see when I bring my pen tool up, a red line should appear to make sure that I'm putting that next point parallel to the one on the right hand side. Let's click and go to the top left and then hover over to the right and close this shape. Zoom out a tad and you should see that this doesn't look like the shape behind it. For this one, we're gonna click the bend tool and select the interior points. And this still doesn't look like I want it to. But remember how we grabbed those handles in the warm up? We can do so in this as well. But when I grab the handles, I still don't get that path that I want. Hit Control Z if you've already selected the handle and hold down the Option or the Alt key to select the top handle on this Bezier handle set. While holding Option and clicking, drag this handle down over here. Awesome. Go ahead and hit Enter. Double click again to enter ve vector edit mode or hit Enter on the shape. Select this point. While holding Option, grab the top handle and drag it like so. There we go. Hit enter to get off vector edit mode and escape to get off of that shape. Zoom out and definitely compare the set of shapes you made below with the examples provided up top. Let's move to page number three, drawing icons. On this next page, you're going to see that we're going to make a set of icons. There are examples listed above and they're actually the finalized vector. You can hit enter to see how all of these points exist and hit escape to get off of them for your own reference. Let's go to icon number one. If you're not seeing the layout grids and you want to, you can click on the frame itself and make sure that your layout grid is being shown. If you're not seeing a layout grid, you can always add a layout grid, which should appear like the one I have here. Again, you can toggle off to not see them if you don't want to, but I'm gonna keep mine on. For this first icon, go ahead and click on the pen tool. I'm gonna start in the top left, zoom in, make sure it's right here, click and go to your next point and click. Let's scroll on down, click to this point right here and this point right here. Now I want to make my arrow in the same vector network or the same vector path of this previous path, but I don't want it to connect like so. Hit the escape key while the pen tool is still in use and you'll see that I now have that detached from my previous point. Let's make the arrow by clicking here and clicking on the arrow point here. I can hold down shift or just snap up here. For this one, I have to detach my pen tool from my vector path by hitting escape. 
go to your point here and bring it down. Hit enter to exit vector edit mode. Scroll out and I want to soften those edges. To do so, go to advanced stroke settings, click on join and make sure all those joins are rounded. Also make sure your endpoints scroll down are rounded as well. And that's looking a little bit better. Enter vector edit mode by selecting the shape and hitting enter. Hold down shift on this top vector point on the left and this bottom vector point on the right. And here we're gonna change the corner radius of those vector points. Let's change that to seven looks pretty good. Exit here, hit enter and escape. And let's move on to the next icon. To create this page icon, go ahead and grab the pen tool. I'm gonna to start in the top left, click right here, go to the center of this red dot and click, center of this red dot and click, and you'll see that my previous settings were saved from my other vector path, which had the end caps rounded, and that's great. Go down here and click and do so on the left side. Make sure to come all the way to your initial vector point and close that path. When you close a path, your pen tool will still be in use, but it will be free to make a vector point wherever you'd like. Let's make that next vector point right here and click, hit escape, go down here and click, hit escape and make that last line. There we go. Let's hit enter to exit vector edit mode. Again, if you're not seeing your shape with those rounded edges, make sure that you're going down to the advanced stroke settings and you have your endpoints set to round. If they're set to square, they'll look like this. If they're set to round, they'll look like they should. Here we're going to need a perfect circle. Now making a perfect circle for me is a little tricky with the pen tool. So one thing I like to do is use an existing shape and then edit that shape's vector path while it's in vector edit mode. To do this, grab the ellipse tool, go to the very center of your frame, hold down shift option or shift alt and make that exactly 80. There we go. Let's change the fill to be black so I can see this a little bit better. From here, we're going to right click and we're going to flatten. I'm going to add a stroke and I'm going to make that stroke four. I'm also gonna take the fill away. You should see I have this like so. For this example, make sure your stroke is set to inside. Hit enter to enter vector edit mode. While in vector edit mode of this circle, grab the pen tool. And from here, you can add to the vector path of this circle by using the pen tool. Hit escape. Go to the top right, bring this down here. Awesome, looking good, hit escape. I'm gonna need to go to my advanced stroke settings and change those end caps to be rounded. Looking good. I'm gonna hit escape, hit enter to be off vector edit mode and escape again. That's looking pretty great. Again, you can always look at the example above to see how yours is stacking up. This last icon is a home icon. Let's grab the pen tool and make this last one. Go down the bottom left, and click to start your vector path. I'm going to go here, go here, and let's make the outside first. Make sure you're clicking in the very center of each one of these dots. Might be helpful to zoom in. Let's keep clicking, keep clicking, and keep clicking. Here, I'm gonna go and actually click on the very midpoint of this line, select here, and click. Now, I already have vector points made. What I can do is click and click to close that path, click and click to close that one. Zoom in, let's make the window. Let's start in the top left and work on the right side, work on completing the bottom and close that shape up. In my advanced stroke settings, I have my joint set to round and that's why I have those nice curves at the bottom and around the edges of all of my vector points. Now, one thing I can do is I wanna add a door to this house. To do so, I'm gonna select a vector point on the existing vector path. Let's hold down shift and bring this up here. Make a click right here and a click right there. To delete the floor of the door, I'm gonna grab the select tool while the vector path is still in vector edit mode. Click on that line and hit delete. While it deletes, it should make that rounded corner because I have my joint set to round, and this is looking pretty good. Now scroll out and look at all these amazing icons that you've made. You should hopefully now feel more comfortable and confident when using the pen tool in Figma Design. Now what I would encourage you to do is click on create new page and explore the pen tool's possibilities by drawing your own illustrations, icons, or graphics in your own free space. Refer to anything in the warm-up, pen tool basics, or drawing icons pages to refer back to what you've learned or the skills and techniques you've recently practiced. Have fun and happy designing.